Hello, I'm Pastor CJ. I'm so grateful that you've decided to join us for our 930 Contemporary Worship Service. Would you pray with me as we begin our time of worship? O oh Lord, our God, we are grateful for the opportunity to worship you and to, to gather in this, this season of different. We're grateful for technology that allows us to connect together, to see one another, to sing together. And we're grateful especially for your spirit, which unites us together here and always, wherever we may be. As we offer this time to you, would that, we ask that that spirit would move among us, encourage us, strengthen us, empower us to better live as your disciples, that we may reveal your kingdom love wherever we may go this week. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Some of the announcements I want to share with you this morning are uh, about the, the business and the, the ways that we as a congregation live out our Christian faith. And one of those is that today as we are gathered to worship, we will celebrate communion. We will bind together through the celebration of the table that Jesus instituted for us, this sacrament. And this is World Communion Sunday, so it won't be just our church, but it will be churches all around the world of all different denominations gathered together to remember this meal. And so I want to invite you to take some time and go and get some bread or some crackers or, and some juice or some water as you prepare to celebrate this meal later on in worship. I also want to th say a big thank you to all of you who have continued to support the ministries of this church by, by giving to God generously of your tithes and offerings to the ministries being done through our church. You can give safely and securely through our online portal, through the tab on the website, the Give tab, or you can continue to give by sending a check in to the office. One of the ways that we give back to God and we love our neighbor is, is available for us on Tuesday, October 6th. This coming Tuesday from 8.30 in the morning to 1.30 in the afternoon, the Blood Mobile will be here in our parking lot. If you are able to give and able to donate, I want to invite you to come and do that so that we can help those who are in need in that respect. I also want to let you know that our Trunk or Treat is going to be happening this year. It's going to be very different than it has been in the past. It will be a drive through event only, and it's going to be on October 30th. If you'd like to get candy for that that you can drop off at the office you can buy candy if you'd like to be, have a trunk that you will be using to to share the love of christ with then you can contact the office and sign up that way also again that's our trunk or treat a drive-through trunk or treat so exciting to be doing something different like that also want to let you know and many of you have heard this already but it's worth saying again we will be resuming in-person worship on october 18th that's two weeks so we, will be, we have been worshiping for the last six months in this uh, diaspora way, dispersed way, and we will, we will continue to worship online, but we will also be resuming in-person worship. And if you'd like to participate in that, or you know somebody who hasn't been able to join us digitally, then have them contact the office if they are not comfortable using a computer, and they can reserve a spot that way. Or if you are comfortable using a computer, go to our website and there's a link you can follow to reserve your spot for our worship service. We look forward to, to continuing this new way of worshiping that is both online and in person. We look forward to worshiping and being the body of Christ together. Let's join together in our call to worship. Oh God, we join with our sisters and brothers around the world in remembering Christ's sacrifice for us. For the opportunity to eat and drink together, and for the life we have received, we give you thanks and praise. In the, in the abundance of your many gifts, grant us grace to fill one another's lives with love. Redeem, restore, and remold us until we are made new. Transform our daily bread into bread of life, and the cup that we drink into cup of salvation. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. 
sing these songs this morning as we gather in your presence, as we, as we reach out with our hearts to you, Lord, we ask that you would be part of what we're doing, Lord, that you would be our inspiration, our motivation, our focus this morning as, 
as your word is proclaimed, as our hearts are challenged, our lives are, are pushed in the right direction, Lord, we just give you this time and this moment, this opportunity for your Holy Spirit to work. We thank you for moments of simplicity where we can just be with you at your feet. Lord, bless this time. Shower us with your Holy Spirit. We ask all of this in your precious and holy name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from the Old Testament, uh, Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. One of our last in-person worship Sundays back in March was a special church-wide celebration on Communion Sunday as all three worship services came together uh, for two services here in the Family Life Center with both the choir and the band leading. We worshiped, we celebrated communion together, we brought in new members into the life of the church that day, not into a particular service that they attended, but into the body of our community church. We had lunch together afterwards. I remember that as a wonderful day of celebration. And honestly, it feels so much further away right now than just the six and a half months ago that it was. Two weeks after that Sunday, we had a very low attended Sunday of worship as everyone was becoming more aware of COVID-19 in the United States. And by March 22nd, we had suspended in-person worship with a move to having worship be solely online. At the time, I remember thinking we'd be back in a couple of weeks, then Easter, then Pentecost, then maybe the end of summer, but even then our numbers were still concerning. And now we're making plans to resume in-person worship in just a couple of weeks in mid-October. On a normal schedule, in a normal year, we would have gathered for two in-person worship services in the sanctuary today for combined worship again as we marked World Communion Sunday together. I have to say that for the first several weeks, it almost felt normal for us as your pastors and worship teams. We still came to the campus on Sunday mornings to record two worship services, but it was off-putting to see no cars in the parking lot when we arrived. No people outside or in the pews or in chairs. No handshakes, hugs, conversations, or even coffee and donuts. And more times than not, those were stressful mornings on our producing staff. Mostly Joey. Because if the internet connection wasn't working right, then we were under pressure knowing that you all were sitting at home waiting to participate in worship and could not. Or some Sundays you could see us but not hear us right away. Eventually we moved to recording ahead of time on Thursdays so that there would be less issues on Sunday mornings. Worship was already then uh, recorded and uploaded and scheduled to go live at the times when you would be logging on to watch and to participate. I'm thankful for all of you who have faithfully watched week in and week out 
and participated by singing along with the music at home, by sending in your tithes, by joining us in prayer, and by chatting online with the things that stood out to you about the messages. That connection to one another is so important. I know that it's been hard to be apart from one another. I get that. It's still odd to this extrovert to come into a building with just a handful of people on Thursday morning to record worship and then again on Thursday night. And then after 20 years of being used to being in a building on Sunday mornings to worship, to be sitting on the couch at home, logging in with my family to join and participate in worship with you. It's not bad. It's just different. But you have lived out your call to love God and to love your neighbors as we have worshiped from home And for that, I am so very proud of you. But after all of this over the last several months, it's made me think a lot and reflect a lot on what worship really is and what worship is to mean for us. Is worship just a service that we attend in a specific building at a specific time? Is it a service we log on to through the computer? Or is it an attitude that we bring with us to both of those situations and anywhere else that we might go? Our scripture lesson this morning speaks to worship. The Old Testament, the song book of the Israelites, Psalm 150, is short and sweet and right to the point. And I'm going to read it for you again. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Worship is about praise. It's about praising God just for who he is and for what he's done in the world and in our lives. We praise with our voices. We praise with our whole bodies. We praise with the musical instruments that we play. Everything that has breath is called to praise. That makes sense. Jesus in the New Testament told us that the whole law and prophets hangs on two things. And the first one was to love God with all that you were. To love God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind. To praise him with all that we are. That's what worship is called to be. Now, of course, over the years we've laid in that with a lot of beautiful traditions and expectations for how and when we should gather together for worship as a community, over what day of the week, to the styles of our buildings, to the styles of our worship, contemporary, traditional, blended, and all of the little elements that make up those services ushers and registration pads and offering towers and so much more. We shop around from place to place to find a church with worship that speaks to us. And what that means is it's really more about how we connect with one another and what customs and traditions we're most familiar with or find comforting to us. We've layered worship with all of these things, which are lovely and beautiful and can be meaningful. But sometimes we lose the point of it all when we become entrenched in our familiar patterns and rhythms. And the point of worship, according to Psalm 150 and Jesus' own testimony, is not about us. It is not about us and our own edification. It is about praising God. Years ago, I heard the worship song, Heart of Worship, by Matt Redman. 
The lyrics are powerful, especially the chorus. And Joey's going to sing and play part of that for us today. Thank you, Joey. Beautiful, beautiful words and powerful sentiment. But it was years before I heard the story behind the story of how this particular song came to be. And I think it's even more powerful. Matt Redman wrote the words and the music. He served as a worship leader at a church in Waterford, England called Soul Survivor. And towards the end of the 1990s, the church had sort of fallen into this season of apathy and just kind of going through the motions. And so the pastor there did something pretty brave. He decided to get rid of the sound system and the band for a season. And when the congregation gathered together for worship, they used only their voices. His point was if the church had lost its way in worship, the way to get back to the heart of it would be to strip everything else away. Furthermore, he went on to remind the church that they were meant to be producers in worship, participants, and not just consumers or observers. And he asked them to think about this question. When you come through the doors on a Sunday... What are you bringing as your offering to God? After that season of worshiping differently, Redmond wrote Heart of Worship rather quickly one day, sort of summarizing what he and the congregation had learned from their experience. When you strip everything else away and you come back to the heart of worship, it's about God. Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and lifting up our praise and adoration to them. Attending a worship service, whether it's in person or online, isn't like going to a concert or a show where we only watch and clap in the appropriate places and offer our commentary afterwards. It's meant to be a time when we praise God. And we have always tried to offer up multiple avenues for you to do that, to participate, to respond in worship in so many places in our services. And so many of those things still translate 
even now in different ways as we've been expressing them online with call to worship moments recorded by the children in our congregation, singing the songs, uh, giving online, lifting up your prayers in the prayer journal, hearing the word proclaimed and receiving communion. And even as we resume in-person worship later this month, I know it won't be like we'll just pick up right where we left off in March. There will still be a need for things to be different so that we can continue to love God and love our neighbor well in this season. Masks and distancing, no singing, limited capacities. We can get really frustrated with that. Bogged down in all the differences from what we are comfortable with, view it as major disruption, or we can approach this whole pandemic season and the move to worship differently as an opportunity to reflect on what it really means to us, to each and every one of us, to worship whether in person or online, I want you to be thinking about this question as you approach worship moving forward. What are you bringing as your offering of praise to God? What are you bringing as your offering of praise to God? Today we have the opportunity to celebrate and praise God for the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ as we celebrate communion with one another. And I invite you, if you haven't done it already, to, to gather up your communion elements so that in just a few moments when we begin the liturgy, you are ready. As CJ said earlier, it's World Communion Sunday. This is an ecumenical Sunday when so many different Christian denominations worldwide commit to the sharing of communion on this day so that we can partake as one body of Christ together. And as always, our communion table is open for anyone who would like to participate. You don't have to be a member of this church or of any church. This is Jesus's table. So here are these words of invitation to it. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. Join me in the words of the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You have made from one nation and people to live on all the face of the earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. He commissioned us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. And today his family in all the world is joining at his holy table. Just as Jesus would do every year, as a child and now as an adult, he gathered with his disciples to celebrate the Passover. The meal that commemorated the events of Israel enslaved in Egypt, crying out for a deliverer, crying out for God to do something on their behalf. When he gathered with his disciples that, t- that year, they reached the end of the meal and he, he took a loaf of bread. And he looked at them, he looked them in the eyes and he, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Take and eat. And I'm sure that floored Jesus' disciples because those were not the right words. But they couldn't ignore what he had said. This is my body. Take and eat. And later on in the meal, he took the cup. A cup that had symbolism that they, they understood, that they knew. And Jesus knew too, but... Again, he changed the words on them. And he said, take, drink, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink of it, remember me. And so in that act, in those moments, Jesus transformed a a memorial of the Passover, of God's decisive actions on behalf of Israel and transformed it into something that we all remember. God's decisive act in all of history, in all of creation, to redeem and welcome us, to invite us to his table. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, We offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has has died. died. Christ Christ is risen. risen. Christ Christ will will come come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout the world and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be be thy thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to take the bread that you have with you, to take a hold of it, and to lift it up. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Thanks be to God. Amen.
invite you to take your juice or your water. Take the cup. Remember Jesus, his love poured out for you. This is the body of Christ, the blood of Christ poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink in remembrance of Jesus. could fathom such boundless grace. The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken and I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living home. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost his grip on me. I have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost his grip on me. You have broken every chain.
you pray with me? Gracious and merciful God, we give you thanks for this opportunity that we've had to gather together with one another and to be gathered into your presence and to worship, to praise you, to adore you, to thank you for who you are and for what you have done in our lives, especially for Jesus, for our salvation, for this relationship with you that is available to us. We ask that as we move forward from this day and from this space, that you would help us to be able to keep that heart of worship at the forefront. That when we, whenever we come to worship, whether we are gathered in person or online, that we would come thinking about what we can bring to you as our offering of praise, that we can make it not about us, but that we can make it about you. We thank you for the ways in which you have been at work in our lives, in our church family. We lift up some before you now that are in need of your healing touch and grace. We lift up Rod Jacobs and Phyllis Wickham and Shirley Himes, Bob Jordan, Jack Haney, Ed Ross, Jay Lacey, Jim Kugel, Jim Ledford, Rob Riker, Marilyn Vito, John Howe, Barbara Burgess, Lena and Otto Santos, Faith Vitalano and Gretchen Snyder. You know every name, you know every situation. And we ask for you to bring about the healing and the grace that are needed we lift up the family of Doris Atwood, who passed away recently. And in particular, we think of her sister, Donna Kunkelman, who is also a part of this congregation, and ask that you would grant your comfort and that you would grant your peace. Continue your work in these situations and in all the situations that concern us. Help us to be able to see your hand and to be able to trust in your heart. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. I'm so glad that you were able to be gathered with us as we worshiped and praised God together. Uh, be safe until we are with one another again. <laughs>